Ladies and gentlemen, prepare to be motivated by your host, Reverend John Wheeler! Now shut up! You shut up! Sit down! Shut up! Shut up! You know, I'm going to be straight with you people. You know, since this is a motivational podcast, it's very important to stay motivated at all times. And no matter how bad your ideas are, to just run with them and kick and fight and hurt anyone that gets in your way. I just realized the power cord is not all the way plugged into this and we're playing this game again. I'm just going to let it go this time. We'll see. You want me to get up and just... Yeah, would you? I mean, I am the producer. You are the producer, Bill. This is a Bill Marashi, once again, our producer. You see how it's just like hanging out of there? It's because I made it so that the camera looks good. And then yeah, the power. Oh, it's but you. a little light. Oh, yeah, that's what we need. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Some hippie saying that. Anyway. um, Speaking of hippies. Remember when the original Top Gun came out and you were, if you were my age, you were like six? Wait, that was, that was like the mid It was 80, I think it was 86. It might have been. So you might not have been alive you might, or you might have been one. I was one. But it was ubiquitous. I mean, you, what, you, no one had that on VHS when you were a kid? Like no, no, no I, cousins? I've seen it many, many times. 86. Okay, hey, guess that year. Because the new one has just come out. And I haven't watched it, but, like, Don Draper's in it, so I kind of want to see it. I, I mean, I don't have a complex about that or anything, as you can see. But, uh, you know, the, obviously treat yourself to the video episodes. It's so important to watch this on a 2015 laptop webcam, despite the fact that I have a house full of video equipment because that's my actual job. But since it is my job, I'm too fucking lazy to reset it up in a different room for a podcast because fuck you. And also, there's a good chance you're just listening to it anyway. And wouldn't I feel quite the fool? An April fool, as it were, despite it being June, if I went through all that for nothing. But anyway, yeah, there's like a new Top Gun out. Is Tom Cruise in that? Yeah. As Is he supposed to be young or is or they nope. put CG on him like Luke Skywalker in the end of Mandalorian where he's like, vroom, 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 vroom. but then they don't show him in the darkness. They do it in the bright light and he looks like shit. They brought him back to uh, train, uh, actually, uh, Val Kilmer's character, who I don't think is in there. They have a shot of him in like an admiral outfit. He he specifically asked for him to come back. Val Kilmer. Yeah. Isn't he? Doesn't he have like cancer or something? Like I thought Val Kilmer was all fucked up. I don't know. They have a picture of him like in an admiral outfit, and I don't think. Well, he's but he might. It might have just been at a party. Right. Like he, <laughs> Admiral Kilmer. I, mean, I don't know. The, the the thing the thing is, is it doesn't really matter at all. Alexis has never seen it, and I was gonna try to make her watch it either yesterday, which she declined, and then today it never really came up. But, uh, you know, everyone has seen Top Gun. I had the shitty Nintendo game where you couldn't oh, land. Oh, yeah. Like, I owned, like, some back then, that was, like, a lot of money. Like, my parents bought me that game, and, like, I couldn't get past the end of the first level. It was like, hey, hey this was a lot of shifts at whatever in the 80s, that whatever they work, whatever garbage job. That, you know, you know, it's like it was probably like 30 bucks, which is, what, 90 now dollars? No. Uh, or back more? Then, all new games were 50 bucks. Were they 50 for the yep. NES in the mid-80s? Yep. Okay, yeah, that was a lot. So, that, well, yeah, that was like, a, there was like two. Either way, it was like more than a whole day at what your crap job. And you have a kid who was me and whatever. But... Yeah, and it was it was like a little fun, and then it was this part was just impossible. That's got to be a. Th I wonder if that weighs on anyone's conscience. Like we made we half assed this game, and they cost so much. No, it's business. They don't care. Of course, they wouldn't care. Why would they care if Top Gun was too fucking hard? And it wasn't like a challenge. It was like, well, you got to figure it out. It's like it just didn't work right. Like I remember, like my dad wasn't necessarily a video game guy but i was so little that i'm like can you finish this level for me and sometimes he could so as an adult his hand eye coordination was simply better uh and then no one though 
No one could beat that fucking Top Gun level where you had to let, like get refuel and then you would just fly off the edge of the aircraft carrier and explode. And it's funny because that movie wasn't really about flying airplanes at all. That's why kids liked it. It's why everyone liked it. It's why everyone's older brother had it on VHS and everyone was like square now 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 and uh Danger Zone and you know which is uh, if you know archer i honestly can't remember which scenes are from top gun and which scenes are from days of thunder and i don't remember which scenes are from top gun and which scenes are from hot shots part do it's uh, very difficult i think when saddam hussein got his wiener stuck in a dustbuster i almost positive that was top gun but even though it was long before the Iraq war, it's like he was still installed by Reagan and the, uh, <laughs> the Russian to fight the Russians and the fucking by 1986 or whatever. So he was our friend. So they were like, let's put our friend Saddam Hussein in a funny situation where he where he uses a, an American 80s dustbuster to get dog food off his pants. And then his wiener gets caught in it. And he's like, oh, oh, oh. and then he likes it because that's just a slice of life, you know. Um, but yeah, Quentin, t I wanted, I really wanted Alexis's reaction to this. Unfortunately, uh, you know, the podcast day has come and is about to go. Uh, we weren't going to film it. It wasn't going to be, uh, like that hoarders thing. Right. Although I suspect that had we actually done it, it might've been a little like that hoarders thing, <laughs> but no, I, I was watching this thing on YouTube and I don't know if it was from a movie or from a documentary or, like, what the fuck it was. But Quentin Tarantino was explaining that what Top Gun was really about was about, you know, it was in the mid-80s. It, it, was, it was about Maverick's character struggling with his sexuality and all of his buddies, right? Like... Iceman and Goose, woo, uh, going like, hey, put tight jeans on and come be and wear aviator sunglasses and come be gay with us. Come do the thing. And Tarantino, I mean, he broke it. It's weird because I like I knew everything he was talking about. Like Tarantino broke it down where there's the chick in the movie and I forget her name. Some actress from back then. She was like super hot. And there's like a scene where he goes over to her house and then just like takes a shower and she's like, I'm going to get some dick. And then he doesn't have sex with her. And it's like, and it was the 80s. So that was like weird. It's like, wait, why did he like not? Every movie is about trying to get laid. Like you ever seen weird science? Like no one turns down that hot, hot poontang. What the fuck? And uh, he just leaves and she's all confused. And then, uh, then she's like dressed up like a man in like the next, they're like in an elevator or something. And she's like a dress, like a tough guy. And people are like, Oh, it's cause she's trying to like fit in with like the army boys or something. Well, Val Kilmer looks like Nick cave, but not as good. Kelly McGillis. Yeah. Oh, she looks like Judy Dench there. Mm -hmm. Well, they're probably the same age. I mean, I forget time is just, a, just a motherfucking bitch. But, um, and then, like, Goose dies, and it's weird, and it's, like, obviously about AIDS. And then at the end, it's just like, you can ride my tail anytime. Like, only if you ride mine first. And everyone's like, what? And it's real weird, and it, it's fine. It's an interesting story, and it was back when there were a few less chefs in the kitchen. And what I, what I liken it to is, uh, it's like Rob Helford and Judas Priest, right? So, you know, you were like, Hell, fu yeah, fuck yeah, he's metal. He's got, like, leather chaps on and one of those hats. And he rides a motorcycle out on the stage. And he's like, yeah, I went through the danger zone. Judas Priest never covered uh, Kenny Loggins' danger zone. But you know it would have been fucking awesome if they would have. Um, and there's still time. Rob Helford is very much alive and very much still has it. There was a, a, either an MTV or a VH1 show or something I watched a while ago where it was like, uh, you know, who's still got it? And there's people like uh, the, the singer of Motley Crue is just fat and a joke. But there's people like Rob Helford who are even older than him. And they're still like Judas Priest is still just like doing jump kicks and cartwheels. Like, fuck yeah. And he's like 78. And he's just, he can just still hit those high notes. And it's really impressive, but it's... Uh, <laughs> When Rob Helford came out as gay, he was like, I, I didn't think I had to come out. I thought you knew was kind of his whole thing. And I feel like Top Gun, you know, whoever was originally behind that, who 
you know, it's, it's very possible as died of AIDS by now. I don't know. But it, it, it's like Rob Helford was always like, yeah, I, what? Like I wrote all these songs about the, the, the denim daddies bumping up against the leather dudes. And everyone's like, yeah, it was about a bar fight. Because then they all got sweaty and down and dirty after that in the next verse. And he's like, y- y- yeah. I mean, I wasn't really talking about a fight. But yeah, he's pretty. I wasn't talking about fight. I mean, yeah, there's a little wrestling involved. Some people got hurt. That is true. But, but he, yeah, he's very forthright about it. And it, it's kind of like that. Uh, also, like Mac from Always Sunny. It's like, no, it's just guys, it's just tough guys wrestling, you know? There's nothing, you, you don't get, he's like, hey, uh, man, I think that uh, those guys might be, no, Frank, you're not listening. They're, they're, they're tough guys, and they're, they're, they're wrestling, and they're oiled up, because, you know, it, 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 it's, it's hard to get a grapple on someone when they're oily, okay? And that's why they oil up their muscles before they wrestle. Uh, all right. Want to go get loaded? <laughs> or whatever, like, that's, it's, it's like this Mac from Always Sunny moment, it's like <laughs> Rob Alford from Judas Priest. And it's all, uh, it gets more comical as it goes on. as because, you know, society has become more progressive and become more like, hey, it's there's nothing wrong with being gay. And there's not. And that it, it's good. But back in 1986, though. You know, but you know, Rob Halford was still making secretly making heavy metal songs about about uh, you know whatever Judas Priest sang about breaking the law. We know what they mean, Bre- breaking the societal norms, the societal norms. But that doesn't sound good under a guitar solo. So it's breaking the law, and you're like, it's probably about robbing banks. That's probably what Rob Halford was talking about. It was definitely not about sodomy or or whatever. It was it was certainly about shooting guns at people and being a cool cowboy. And there's nothing gay about being a cowboy, as we know. So whatever. But when Top Gun was happening, it was around that same time. It was 1986. You couldn't, you know, it was like people barely knew what AIDS was. But somebody made that move because here's the thing: like either Top Gun was about kind of, uh, you know, some a writer or a director, whoever whoever's brainchild it was, kind of, you know, struggling with the societal norms of like, oh, I'm, I'm fucking gay, but what do you do? Like, I don't know. Like, do you just live this life? Do you live a lie? You know, what do you do? Do you play volleyball in slow motion? Like, what's the, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, it could be about that. Or maybe it's just about Top Gun things. But what are those? I think is the biggest question. Like, what if Top Gun's not because nothing's about what it's about. Right, you know, like I mean, Pulp Fiction's not really just about like, well, there's some guys and they shoot some people, and then everybody has a few laughs and they go home. No, it's about all these like weird themes. And, and I bring up a Tarantino movie because he was the one yelling about it. Like Top Gun, I don't think it was just like an action movie, was it? Like, was it really about our battle against the Russians and how much better our airplanes were than them? Because the Russians aren't, they're, they're not even characters. Like, you never see them. Because when Rocky fights Ivan Drago, right? In Rocky IV, when Rocky defeats communism through boxing and, like, and, and frees Russia or whatever happens in that, uh, you know, it, like, you, you see Ivan Drago, you see him training, you see the doctors giving him shots of steroids and experimental Russian evil guy things because the Russians were enemies then or whatever. And it was like very pointedly, you know, about the battle against this person, this character who's characterizing in this entire ideology or whatever. And it brings it, it's unrealistic because everyone, it brings everyone together in the end, the way no boxing match really ever has. And certainly we're still having some problems with Russia, but um, in Top Gun, they're, fi- they're 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 fighting, and also it's like the eighty. Like I guess the Cold War is still happening. Yep. But they're shooting. Were we shooting jet fighters down? Was that ever a thing? Because Cold War means Cold War, like spies, espionage, like oh this might happen. We're oh we're moving our missiles over to Cuba. Like well, I don't know. Like we what's what's Khrushchev doing? Oh they're hiding. And by the way, eighty six is when Chernobyl was happening. Like, I don't know if Top Gun takes place in the exact year that it came out in. When it, when it came out. That's, ah, yeah, that's stupid. But, but but I don't know. Like, at that part, I wanted to rewatch it, which I'm guessing wouldn't have probably actually shown me anything. Like, I probably would be no closer to having an ideological grip. Um, are you reading the... Uh, I am reading the plot. The Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah. No, good. I, I want to know. 
Like, I, I, I want to understand Top Gun better because I... Like, no movie is about what it's exactly about, especially war movies. Especially, it's like, what are you, what are you watching, a motorcycle movie? It's like, well, what, yeah. Like, was Death Race 2000 about racing? Or was it about, you know, the media and society and how life is cheap and David Carradine is Frankenstein? And that movie was amazing. Sylvester Stallone was in that. And someone else, there was yeah, like an... I thought Sylvester Stallone was Frankenstein. No, 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 David Carradine was. Okay. Matter of fact, by the way, this is how much of a movie fucking dork I am. Uh, the, I, you know, I've, I've always loved Death Race 2000. I sampled David Carradine dialogue in in uh, one or two SMB songs or whatever. Like there was, there was a couple real pounding industrial songs we had where I would just be like, why do you love me? Why do you love me? Why do you love me? Because I kill people. Like it was so, it was such good metal sample movie. And he's like, uh, you only worship me because I drive the monster and wear the suit. And uh, yeah, he said all these weird things. Like, I'm going to shake hands with Mr. President. <laughs> like it, was, it was David Kennedy. But, but here's a fun thing. That's not why I'm a dork. Well, it's part of it. But in uh, Kill Bill, another Tarantino movie, because he was Bill in that, David Carradine, in the second one, he's got a, oh yeah, uh, yeah, I'm going to kill Bill. But when he's outside of Bud, his brother's trailer, the one that gets bit by the snake, or no spoilers, no one listens to this. But I, he, the car that Bill's character is has parked out front of Bud's trailer is the car, the same model and year and everything. I, it's probably not the same one from the movie, or maybe Tarantino has some pull. But what, regardless, it's Frankenstein's car. From Death Race 2000. I know I was one of like two people on the whole fucking internet at that time now. Everybody, you know? But it was like, that's without all the lizard scales because he's got this weird reptile monster car when he's Frankenstein. Uh, it's it's just it's what that car was underneath. But it is the same car that he pulls up in. And it's on, it's on screen for like three seconds. And I'm like, that's David Carradine's car from the fucking thing. And then he hung himself while he was jacking off. But... Yeah, uh, that was, uh, wait, why am I talking about that? Why, how did I get a Death Race 2000 and kill Bill? This has nothing to do with Top Gun. I don't remember. Ah, oh, fuck, I man. about the plot of Top Gun. Yeah, well, okay, right. No, oh, so what's Top Gun about if it's not about, yeah, because I was talking about Rocky. It's like, it's not about the fighting the Cold War because, A, in the real Cold War, I don't think there was, like, Dog fights and actual plane. If if jet fighters, million dollar jet fighters, are getting shot down over the ocean, like it would have turned into a hot war. It would have been in a real war, like everything that happened, in, you know, like James Bond in the '60s and the Cold War, or even X Men First Class. It was like, yeah, nothing erupts. It was all just people sneaking around and spying on each other, and that's what a Cold War is. It's aggression without openly. You know, there's like machine guns and airplanes <laughs> dropping bombs on shit. Like, that's uh, that's an open war. You know, uh, so you know, it, it seemed like it was like slightly fictional, but also there's no, you know, you saw the commanders and all the guys in the locker room goosing each other and whatnot, and you know, whatever. And, uh, but you never saw like, oh, there's a bunch of fun-loving Russian guys like Super Trooper in their way through a bunch of volleyball games and, and, and flying their MIGs around. And it was about, I mean, it's where I learned that our, uh, I guess Top Gun taught me a little about, because I was six, about how some of, even at that point, despite the Iron Curtain, we knew that like Russian's economy was a fraction. And I remember feeling validated when the cold after the berlin wall fell or whatever and we learned that like russia's gdp was like 23 percent of ours like it, it, an open war we would have fucking stomped them into the crowd especially back then like no one would have been like i'm a little on the fence about that. like every last human being in 1988 would have been like fuck those guys like we would have absolutely destroyed them and yeah, I'm not a jingoistic nationalist guy, but it's just like we were so afraid, but they would have just gotten flattened. They would now, and that might be coming, but maybe some janky nuclear bombs will go off. That will not be cool. But my point was, is that Top Gun pointed out, sort of, 
that the the MIGs couldn't do complete like 360 rolls and things. Like they just didn't have the jet fighter technology that Tom Cruise had in 1986. Like they just didn't. It's just the way it was. But there was also no characterization, and, and that's the thing. It was it was like meant to be a video game, except for everything that happened, and it was sort of soap opera and naked duty. And I think that's kind of where maybe like <laughs> the idea that it was about Maverick choosing to hide who he was with the the hot lady in it, and and just go like, yeah, but it's easier this way, or go. I'm gonna go play volleyball in the locker room with these hot hot rock hard jet fighter men. Or whatever, and we're gonna beat the Russians, who are, I guess, Reagan's America. I don't know what it stands for. AIDS. Somebody. Go, oh, yeah, the Russians killed Goose. So the, the Russians were AIDS. Nope. Oh, they didn't. Was it a training mission? What happened nope. to Goose? Okay, this is gonna be good because I got into some big arguments about this in third grade when there was VHS and or just you had to remember from the theater with no Wikipedia, no YouTube, and no Quentin Tarantino to tell me what was happening. So. Uh, we, yeah, we have to recreate, I think, a little bit of the, uh, you know, and figure out what happened to Goose. So, uh, Maverick and Iceman yes. are flying different F-14s, and they are competing for the Top Gun trophy for their oh, graduating yeah. class. Oh, but yeah, because they're yeah. in, like, jet fighter school. Right. Where in the locker room, nothing sexy ever happens, obviously. When you're young and in college, you know. Yeah, that's got no, no, no. This is yeah. They're they're, they're learning who's gonna be the top uh, gun. <laughs> so the sequel, Bottom Gun, underrated, I think. <laughs> <laughs> we should make Bottom Gun. <laughs> Do you think that's? Oh, by the way, let's play a game right now. Is Bottom Gun already a porno parody of Top Gun? If not, Bill, we are leaving money on the table here. And then we're going to get back to the plot of Top Gun, but I'm a little more interested in the plot of Bottom Gun. <laughs> Bottom Gun is a coffee brand. <laughs> yeah. Bottom Gun. Hot there's a picture of, of there's the picture of someone with a pistol, some panties, hot straight and normal, Bottom Gun. Oh my god. That's great. It's like a Cub Scout patch too. It's got a missile on it. I <laughs> Okay, so some more, I'm sorry, we don't have really, I'm too lazy to make it go on screen, but Bill found a thing with the Top Gun logo and then the Bottom Gun logo under it. Oh, oh God, and there's Tom Cruise, Top Gun, John Travolta, Bottom Gun next to each other in what looks like an NES game loading screen. Uh, <laughs> and then that, what, what's the, here, click on the gun, like what's the Bottom Gun just... Some that doesn't even look real because why are you holding it like that? Well, also look at where the barrel is, it's like transparent. That wouldn't you would die. Okay, well, apparently the bottom gun's not the one to use in a gun. Don't bring a bottom to a top gun fight. How would that even work? No, it wouldn't. It would blow your goddamn hand off. That's a weird Photoshop, but I don't know why that's bottom gun. I like, <laughs> I'm so glad that you google bottom gun. The internet is just, I mean, it's destroyed democracy, but it's also just so fun. I, uh, okay. All right. So someone, oh, that's a rhino. Oh, Chapa makes that, uh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a guy that knows a lot about guns. That's Wait, interesting. Chiapa rhino is the bottom gun. But why is it the bottom gun? Because the barrel's down. Oh, it's, oh, does it fire from the, the, cha it's a revolver, everybody. Yeah. This is, uh, uh, yeah, this needs to be more visual if we're really going to spend too much time on this. But I've seen those. I think Harley Quinn uses that in, in the Suicide Squad movie or something. Like a, like a gold, like the gold one there or something. Those are dope as fuck, actually, but they're, they're God, those are expensive. Those are so, and it's like, why? They just throw bullets out. But Chiapa makes that, um, they do make a, a bullpup um, semi-automatic kind of like nine millimeter like a thing i wanted to buy one and they're probably so, they, i'm sure they've <coughs> skyrocketed they're only like 400 bucks and they're actually apparently pretty great but yeah let's not get too deep into that well we uh, top gun gun will be in this so maybe some people who right. uh, care about guns will, oh right do you so like what yeah gun? yeah bill what is the plot of top gun if it's not about a man choosing his path to either you know oh, uh God. live a lie with a woman 
or go with the boys and be the top gun. God, this is too many. But did you already don't read it verbatim? Just no, I'm not not going to. But I I will tell you that. uh, So, uh, Maverick and Goose are uh, flying through uh, roommates. Yes, Uh Uh, Iceman's jet wash and suffer a flame out of both engines. Um, So it was during a training mission. It was during like the competition for the uh, Top Gun trophy. Okay. Oh, it's about the competition. What? No. All okay. Right. Let, let me let me get to it. Okay. And uh, that is when uh, uh, Maverick and Goose need to eject and eject. I thought you were gonna say ejaculate. It, yes. <laughs> Ma- Ma- okay. Maverick comes too soon and Goose pays the price because he uh, hits his head on the canopy and dies. That's what happens. That's true. Yes. He prematurely ejects. Yep. And then gets AIDS. Yep. Okay. Uh, so he dies. And uh, Iceman wins the uh, Top Gun trophy. Then, uh, and he thro- at the end he throws Goose's dog tags over the edge into the ocean, and it's so dramatic and well, hot. I mean, yeah. So he really uh, cares about his roommate. So Maverick and uh, Merlin. I don't even remember. I remember. No, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. He had like a wizard name. I remember. I remember. Okay, but Cougars remember when you were a kid? Ario, Ario Speedwagon. Yeah. Uh, I, oh, R-I-O. Oh, no. But I remember, like, you remember when you always felt like when you watched it again, there'd be more like when you were a kid, which is weird because now it, it like it is. If you download a video game, you might wake up one morning and it's got like new characters and levels in it because that's how like things work. But back then they didn't work like that. But you felt like maybe this time when I watch Top Gun, we'll learn more about Merlin and whatever. And then your dad's like, oh, there'll be a sequel. And then there was, well, now there is. So maybe they're going to get deep, deep into Merlin. Uh, Maverick, deep into Merlin is actually the full title of Bottom Gun 2. Full beard. (laughs) Oh my God, yeah. Oh, but uh, there was a, they need to rescue a uh, disabled communication ship that drifted into hostile waters. Oh, so, but did they shoot down any Russians? Is that yes. actually happened? Okay. Uh, so they, they start they World shoot, War Three in this down movie. Three Migs and the other two flee, uh, but uh, from the Chili Peppers. Yes. Okay. The other two flee. I, and, I've been and, drinking since ten in the morning. And from Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> God, the Kenobi. Oh, we'll talk about that in a minute. I didn't like it, but we'll talk about but it. But flees in it. I saw that. I pointed out to Alexis. She's like, who? But (laughs) that was part of the... She would have had to watch Back to the Future. John's... Yeah, needles! (laughs) Oh, by the way, a friend of mine's girlfriend uh, met Flea once because she worked at, like, the main downtown Ragstock back when this mattered. This is is how old I am. But, um... Uh... She called on... I think, like, on probably a house phone. My... Her boyfriend, my friend, Taylor, and be like, Flea's here. He's like, he just wants to ask you, like, one question. He's like, all right. Like, he was cool. Like, whatever. He was just at Ragstock. What does he care? And then he's like... He basically asked him, like, the Chris Farley, like, you remember... Remember when you were in Back to the Future 2? Like, he just pulled that on him for real. And he was like, oh, my God. I haven't thought about Back to the Future 2 in years. But, yeah, man. And then Taylor's like shocked and offended he was like i think about back to the future 2 every day it was like 2005 <laughs> he's like i think and then he hung up on him <laughs> i think about back to the future 2 every day and i'm like i kind of do too though i mean honestly every year past the year 2000 when there's no hoverboards right i kind of every new year's is a little bittersweet where i'm kind of like okay Calling that fucking thing with the wheels a hoverboard is a slap in the face of everything Dr. Emmett Brown stood for. Mm. Who moved to America. No, he didn't. His parents did. Their family was originally the Von Brauns who moved here in 1946, which I always enjoyed that little, little, little nod to Operation Paperclip. Yep. And Back to the Future, I believe three. Oh, yeah, because that's when he finds a gravestone. He's like, maybe it's just a long, long relative. He's like, no, when we first moved here, we were the Von Brauns. And then they kind of, like, give a pause for anyone in the audience who's like, hey, remember when Walt Disney was best friends with a Nazi war criminal? Uh, Robert Zemeckis did, apparently, and put it in a movie. And uh, that was funny. So 
Yeah, okay. All right. So uh, so it's like Top Gun is just like the fucking what the airplane Olympics? Like that's what it's about. It's like hot dog or uh it's, it's... or uh to the limit or just one of those ski movies but they're like what if it has jet fighters and naked dudes in it in Russia, I guess, but it's not Rocky and the Russians aren't characters. They just have masks on and planes and we assume that shooting them down will not lead to a 80s World War 3 which Basically, in the movie, the what was that? The Miracle? What was the thing where the the American hockey team beat the Russians in 1980? Yeah, uh, miracle on Ice. Miracle that on 34th the, Avenue. That was the mir- Miracle. The Miracle? Was it, was it though? Was that or were the the thing? The win? I think it was called Miracle. Was it? That's so. It insists upon itself. 2004. Wait, yep, that was the movie. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Kurt Russell was in it. Is he still? Did he die? No, we have Kurt Russell still, right? These are like chess pieces. Because I saw a picture yeah, of like next to Betty. White. Okay. Oh yeah, Patrick Swayze's dead. Yeah, we still have Kurt Russell. Swayze died. What? No, he died a while ago. Yeah. But yeah, Kurt Russell is. Uh, he's still acting. God, yeah, he's awesome. I fucking love Kurt. I can't believe he wasn't in Top Gun. He would have been age appropriately sexy, but he. Uh, he oh, was, that's right. He actually. It, he's actually married Goldie Hawn, like in Overboard. Yeah, like, right yeah, there. yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. I well, it was like one of my my me and my dad's favorite movies when I was a little kid to watch together was Big Trouble in Little China, mm. and he I, that movie that movie is still great right now. It, and like how like Kurt Russell's like they make fun of the idea of the main character like where because he's like such a bumbling. It's like he's the tough guy, but he's like the Dorcas and all the the actual uh, Asian dudes that understand the deep black magic of what's happening. And oh, by the way, like Asian black magic, what a cool idea that does not get in 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 you know because I think a lot of when people think of uh, mysticism that's evil, it's a lot of like Northern European pagan, which is cool and great. It was like, oh, it's black magic, you know, like midsummer or something or whatever. I mean, a lot of like people... Asian black magic in that movie is so cool. Like, what a cool! And they like drown those people underwater, and the guy like he's old, but then when he's young, he's like a, a, a discorporeal hologram or whatever, and he like changes shape, and it reminds me of the original Mortal Kombat and shit. It's so cool. I want more of that. Shang Tsung. Oh yeah, I remember too seeing the. Uh, which, if we wanted to, after this, we could play a few rounds on that arcade machine of mine. It has the, the Mortal Kombat 1 through, I don't know, 9 on it. But it has 1 on it for sure. And uh, but I remember, like, seeing that. Again, I was probably, like, young enough where my dad brought me somewhere. And it was, like, seeing, like, Raiden fighting. It was like, this looks like Big Trouble Little China. Like, this is amazing. Uh, and then, like, I think, like, decades later, the people who made that game or like oh yeah 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 it was based off a lot of kung fu things but the mysticism like a lot of it came from fucking uh big trouble in little china because that actually had so much beautifully stylistic weird you know they had the guy with like the lightning bolts and like they had to hold on to the like glowing the women with green eyes the glowing blade and all these like torture things in this giant building and that guy that flew around with all the eyeballs it's like a dungeons and dragons thing apparently kind of too you remember that or that the, the the floating tongue eyeball ball guy that flies around as like the observer or the sentinel or i fucking don't remember what it was but it, Wait, he, are we talking about mortal Kombat? we're talking about big trouble in little china oh right there was like a little like floaty guy yes, with yes, eyeballs yes. all over him, and I, th- I thought it was you that told me. There's like that's like a Dungeons and Dragons like thing. Oh yeah, like the, the, inter- the, the eye- Imperator or the I, something I, I, or other. Uh, the Beholder. The Beholder, because he's covered in eyes. That makes total sense. All right, yes. This guy. Yeah, yeah, he's this floating doom looking fucking thing with eyeballs on the end of his tongue and all over him and shit. That uh. Uh, what's his face? That director that I really like uh, that made like the thing and Big Trouble in Little China. Who was that? I, God, I can't remember anything. I have been uh, when I say I've been drinking since like ten in the morning. It is currently like nine at night right now, and I haven't taken much of a break. Yeah, and it's in his mouth. 
All right. There's so much cool they, they shit can, in that they movie. They changed it just enough that they could get past the copyrights. Well, it's also the 80s, too. Right. So it was just like, yeah. But, no, like, Big Trouble Little China, I feel, is, is uh, which, by the way, probably came out. too. The, yeah, the same <laughs> year as fucking Top Gun, which, why? Yeah, let's talk about, I'm done talking about Top Gun. I don't care about Maverick, except for that Don Draper's in it. You can't I, be the I, Top Gun in the same year as Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah, yeah. That movie is, uh, like, one of those things where it was it was like the uh, Jodorowsky's Dune, the thing where the you know the original '70s Dune movie was not going to be made by David Lynch. It was going to be made by the guy that made El Topo and the Holy Mountain and stuff. And they they invented so many things in that movie that they got it was like it never got released, but the you know got sold around to studios and the stuff in the kind of the illustrated movie bible they made for it got stolen for ever but like big, big trouble in little china is one of those movies where uh it did get made and people do know what it is and it had like kurt russell in it and it's like it's it's a thing it's like a wacky cult classic that everyone well anyone cool remembers but um the stuff in it got co-opted so much like the stuff in it a was probably stolen from other things like the beholder but then b like all this set pieces and magic spells and characterizations and i mean again if if you go mortal Kombat has nothing to do with big trouble in little china you are full of poop sir that is that that the there's so much of the way that the, that original game and it was a game. It was not based off a book or whatever. It was just these nerds that were trying to make a fighting game when that was just starting to be popular made. And so, you know, they had to be drawing it from somewhere. And it's like a video game is not a movie or a book where you have to be a little bit more original. You can kind of be like, yeah, you know. They slice them together in a clip. What did they do? Big chuck. Big we'll turn the sound off and just hit that once. I want. I'll comment on it. So there's a, someone made a YouTube thing. With Big Trouble in Little China and Mortal Kombat. And I... Hi. No, it's like, I don't want that lady to sell me... Yeah. Yeah, they should get an AK like an adult, for fuck's sake. Um, okay, so there's an ad for Big Trouble in Little China. Maybe that's how they made this okay, or maybe... Yeah, so, like, Big Trouble in Little China had these guys in the big, big, you know, sun hats, uh, the, the, the wicker sun hats and stuff, and they have weather powers... And everybody's favorite one was the lightning guy, and that just ends up being Raiden in the, uh... And in the later Mortal Kombat, there's characters named Rain and stuff. Like, it is still the the ones that came out... The little skull on his belt reminds me of, uh, yeah, uh... Goro or something. Or he had a yin yang on his belt. No, uh it wasn't Shang Sun yet. What, oh Shao Kahn? Shao Kahn. Oh, the one that was from Outworld that yeah, that dude comes down on this like Return of the Jedi lightning thing. By the way, I think I remember hearing that the, the whoever did the lightning for this character, the Emperor, and the Gozer shit in Ghostbusters was like the same person who uh invented that, that whatever the trick i mean now i can just do it on my computer but you know who made that, that that lightning overlay animation thing was like someone yeah and they're like gods or something you can't really shoot them we're gonna have to watch this afterwards because i'm pretty sure they're playing mortal Kombat like audio Prob probably probably well we should just watch big trouble i remember like when i oh earlier got netflix or whatever oh yeah he has those spinning things it reminds me of maximilian from the black hole which okay that's a more obscure reference than mortal Kombat. big drum little china like maximilian um yeah i remember when i go like early when netflix was like an internet-based thing holidays uh woo um I remember like that being a thing I found on Netflix was this like I can just watch this yeah there he is David Lopin and one of my favorite uh that actor that plays David Lopin has been this been like a weird Asian guy in so many movies and I really like him um he was in a sitcom and I don't remember what it was I, I think it was something that didn't really make it but that actor this the David Lopin was in it and I just remembered, I, it was just back when you would, like, watch TV, because it was on, like, there weren't that many choices. So I was watching whatever the fuck this was, and I was like, hey! Like, David Lope, he's just, a, like, an old guy on a park bench or whatever, but it's like, David Lopan's in this. Um, but some white guy, the Jersey Shore-looking guy with muscles goes up to him, and is like, 
hey man, I got a tattoo in, I don't know if it was Chinese or whatever they were kind of doing. Uh, but he's like, yeah, it's, it, it means uh, earth and water or whatever. Or no, he was showing it to somebody else. And the, the actor that plays David Lopan kind of looks over and he's like, interrupts him. He like puts his newspaper down. He's like, ah, that's not what that say. What? What's it say? He's like, oh, it's a, yeah, yeah. James Hogg. <laughs> James yes. Hogg is oh fucking cool. He's in so many things I just, that I like. I just saw his latest movie. It's the best. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, that's not what that say. That say, in relationship between two men, you take place of woman. <laughs> and it's like, you never find out in the show whether or not that was the tattoo or he was just feeding a butt munch and saying that to him to fuck with him. Uh, but that's why it was funny. But yeah, no, that guy. I really, what is that called? He's like a character actor, I guess, basically. And, and yeah. everything he's ever in is, is, I like him a lot. But yeah, in Big Trouble in Little China, way up the list. One of my favorite things ever. Another 1986 movie. <laughs> I went Top Gun. But uh, all right. 40 minutes in. Let's get to the meat of this podcast. Uh, no, just kidding. It was probably mostly going to be about Top Gun. But. But here's the other thing I'll say. I have made, I used to do a bit of, I bring dumb news back. Bill is going to be a correspondent on it. Uh, and it's, I mean, partially it's just because I'm, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I, 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 I get excited about things that are new, but if it doesn't get pushed to a new level, I get bored. That might explain my music career where it's like even when, it, you know, it felt like for one or two records there, SMB had cracked this magical golden code. And then we were like, everyone likes this. We better start doing it all different now. And uh, or maybe everyone I worked with was an idiot. Who can say? But probably. But the the, the real thing is I was doing I kind of got bored of doing dumb news. But then again, I got a you know supercomputer built by my extended family which allowed me to make like 3D things and do all this crazy shit. So I got more into it. And you know, hey, lucky me, there's no shortage of dumb news. Like I could be, I could make a thing about a mass shooting and then just vaguely allude to one and it will be relevant forever. And that's the, that's the thank you for shooting all those children because it has made it so I do not have to make the same YouTube video over and over again. I can just make one that's evergreen and that's great. But uh yeah i've decided that i you know since i have the ability to to like build three-dimensional uh, virtual studios and stuff i can have bill chime in on a screen or whatever and uh you know but i used to have a thing called the vlog of eternal stench and one of the last ones of those and this podcast and, and dumb news is kind of the mutation of i moved past it but I'd really spill my guts, and I think I do on this too, so it's okay. But I, uh, I, on the vlog, the very last I think vlog of eternal stench I ever did, I talked about how I finally got on anti-anxiety medicine. But it was sort of a uh, dot 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 to be continued sequel because it, it did it made me feel a lot better. But that uh, I started on Cymbalta, and that came with a lot of side effects uh, that that weren't really as noticeable right away but I had to go up in dose for it to keep working. And it caused like, I think like a hormonal. And I was talking to my doctor, but like I, 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 the main reason I stopped, I had to stop with that is because of the dreams it gave me. And when you're, I don't know if it's better or worse to be a dumb person when it comes to hallucinations or dreams or whatever, because it's like, perhaps if you're a little stupider, everything your brain does scares you more, but maybe your brain's not as creative. Or maybe maybe it's a pit in the pendulum thing where it's like my brain, very creative, and I'm not afraid of much, but it can outdo me. So maybe it's just this thing where no matter where you go, you're always your brain, your subconscious is one step ahead of you, that motherfucker. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I I initially stopped because I was realizing I was having these ultra vivid dreams that lasted every bit of as long as I was asleep, and also that's not good for you. Your REM sleep is only supposed to be part of your circadian rhythm sleeping. You, you don't actually get very good sleep. Like I look tired all the time because I'd be like, I would just shut my eyes and then be like, okay, I'm in a Japanese game show with everyone in my family who's ever died and you know, whatever. And then like, it only ends the minute I wake up and when the sun's coming through the window and it's time to start making videos or whatever. Uh, yeah. And that became so constant that it was making me crazy, but it also, 
I kind of learned once I stopped, like I started getting staph infections. Like I was getting folliculitis. Like the, my beard hairs were coming out, like picking hair out of butter. And it was, it was, it was covered in fucking shit. Like it really, and I was talking to my doctor and he's like, that's kind of a weird side effect, but if it's making your sleep patterns irregular, it could cause a hormonal imbalance, which could cause you to get like, you know, you're, you're, you know, every human being's covered in bacteria at all times. And so they can start to win, you know, if your shit's all fucked up or whatever. So I had to stop. So I started on Zoloft and the transition was really rough. And now I'm realizing that, I mean, I'm on like 50 milligrams of it and I think I'd have to go up. So I'm still anxious. I'm still drinking too much. Which, when I was on Cymbalta, actually, it was, I could, you know, be like, oh, between these two COVID vaccine shots, don't drink. I could, like, not drink for two weeks without replacing it with Kratom or anything, and, like, standing on my head. Now I'm, like, I'm trying to take days off, but I kind of take, like, Kratom and Kava. And it's like, I can't be sober. And I'm like, oh, wait a second. I'm supposed to be on a medication that makes the anxiety and everything that usually my being fucked up. That's what I'm trying to get rid of. And it's made me really depressed. And here's the worst part of it. It's making me fat. And I got to say, if I was someone who's like, well, but I do love my Mountain Dew. And I eat five meals a day. And I drink nothing but beer. And then I drink eat Taco Bell at three in the morning right before bed. Like, yeah, if I was overweight then, sure. I would understand. And I would know there's a way out. At this point, and I made this joke, but I could just quit eating food. And just drink water and go for a go for a brisk walk every day. And what would happen would be is I would lose some weight and it'd be like, you have to eat. You haven't eaten in like a month. You're going to die. But then I wouldn't die. And then I would start gaining weight back. I'd be like, I, I haven't eaten in 90 days. I haven't eaten any food. And like, yeah, well, you're a little overweight, though. I mean, you should work. You, maybe you should start maybe running. Like, how the fuck does this work? Does food a lie? Like, anyway, that's where I'm at. But in all seriousness, at this point, it just has to be the fucking medication I'm on. Because, you know, I my metabolism sucks ass. And I have to work harder than whoever's watching this. I have to work harder than you to not be fat. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're Lizzo. I'm working harder than you to not be fat. You're like, well, I walk to, I live three blocks from my job in this apartment and I have to, I walk there every day. And I mean, until it's winter and then I drive, but I still, and I have abs. I'm like, yeah, fuck you. Fuck you. Go fuck yourself. I am fat. I've been eating just like, like a, a single chicken breast every day. And like once a week I have like a few shots of vodka and I would be fat. Be like, Whoa, the vodka. I'm like, no, 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 no. There are people that drink beer. Beer, dark beer, every day, and they're skinny. Fuck you. Everyone does not have the same metabolism. But anyway, mine sucks for sure. But it sucks so much right now that it absolutely has to be the medication I'm on. And I don't like it. I, I, you know, I don't know. I'm married. I don't know who I'm trying to impress, but. Look, I put myself in videos. Also, I have, you know, yeah, a lot of it's from thrift stores, but some of it was off the internet. I have a lot of clothes, and they fit me at not my absolute skinniest, but they fit me at, like, what is reasonable. And a lot of it doesn't fit me right now. And that is just upsetting to a point that I can barely articulate. However, <clears throat> I'm going to try. And I don't want to just, like, quit drinking permanently because... There's plenty of people out there that can eat a meal and a half a day with no carbs or sugar in it and drink tequila and they don't look like fucking Joey Diaz or whatever. Like, they're not fat. Like, it's just dumb. And it makes me really mad. And it's fucked with my sex drive and I am a problem. I mean, maybe, honestly, there's probably some people like, well, that's probably good. You don't want to be thinking about fucking people that's how you get in trouble you just gotta be you know do nothing but talk about who you're attracted to every minute of every day but then don't ever do it don't do it don't i mean yes the most important thing is who you fuck but then don't fuck is what i think <laughs> our culture is telling us right now as far as i could piece together i'm like no what i want to do is not talk about it but then fuck like, I want to I wanna be, like, be like, well, what did you do today? I'm like, oh, nothing. I watered the plants. But you know what I really did? 
I fucked. That's what I want to do. It's like, well, what are your pronouns? Like, you can call me whatever you want, but when you're not looking, I fucked. Like, that's what I want. I think we should go back to a society of people who don't talk, but they fuck. Bill, what the fuck are you watching? Prepubescent teenager bra commercials? No. Yes, first you are. Off, who is that lady? First is off, that Lindsay those, Rope? Those, Jesus. Those, uh, who the fuck? What is that's this? That's an ad. I don't think so. That's an ad. I'm watching the history of Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell. But okay. Are they? Yeah. So they're married? Yes. That's interesting. He's so old. He looks good. She looks good. They met on the set of this movie that I'm trying. Look at him in his hat. Shirt. Swing shift is where they met. Is this about the 40s or was it made in the 40s? How old are they? No. Is uh, Roger Rabbit in this? They've been, <laughs> they've been there for... Thir- Since uh, 1925. 30, 39 years. Wow. Wow, that's good. For Hollywood, that's amazing. That's good for regular people. Most people die by then. Because they get married at... Swing mm. shift was in 1984. And that's the movie... They've been met. married since then? That's where they met. And um, it's well, Kurt Russell's a good guy. He wasn't in Top Gun, though. No, that he was wasn't. Val Kilmer. It was yeah, <laughs> Val Which Kilmer. They are, they're almost interchangeable. No, Bill, they are not. Okay, I under no. Kurt Russell is so much cooler than Val Kilmer. Yes. I mean, okay, think about he this. He that genre of character that they could stick yeah, in. Yeah, the like the sort of the non-beefcake action sort of guy, I guess. But, okay. Could Kurt Russell have been Batman and Batman forever? Actually, you know what? Yes. Boy, that would have been so much better. Tommy Lee Jones is Two-Face. Jim Carrey is the Riddler. And fucking Kurt Russell. <laughs> Batman. <laughs> I mean, I like Batman Forever. Oh my god, it's a great Batman. Well, no, it's not a great Batman movie, and it's not a great movie, but it doesn't matter. I like it. Maybe just because I like Tommy Lee Jones. Big Two Fish. Oh. All right, where are we at here? Fifty-one minutes of pointless bullshit. I thought I could stretch out at least the mental health thing longer. But it doesn't um, matter. And I kind of want to watch Big Trouble in Little China or Top Gun. And I want to film Alexis watching Top Gun. Mm. Also, I think, how late is it right now? It's 9, 12? Yeah. yeah. Meredith was going to get a hold of me. Well, but I say that a lot, don't I? Yeah, and she's not. Because I need a haircut. I'm going to actually have to go get a haircut at a place. Because I'm I'm meeting I'm 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 I have a meeting with the uh, the neighborhood association board on Thursday because this is just still happening, and I thought I, w- I should get a haircut for it. Mm. Like I'm gonna dress nice and get a haircut. I can't probably slim down by then, but I sh- I want I want to be like look, I don't check a single box. And this is Minneapolis, and you maybe need to. But, I, you know, at the very least, if I'm slick enough, someone will be like, but we can use this guy. Because, you know, I, you know, I want to I go and cuss out, like, the chief of police or something. Like, I'm not afraid to do that. And I'm someone who looks a certain way where they might actually humor me for longer than a 300-pound woman with green hair. It's like, yeah, I, you know, who? great. But, you know... Th- that person can talk to the kids about not shooting each other, and I will go scream at fucking the mayor. Like, that'll be my job, and they'll have to deal with me. I'll be a problem. I'll be like Fed Smoker, but not on meth. And maybe, like, I don't know, a little less filthy, I guess. I, I don't know. That, that might not even be a good comparison. but I will... I will go to city council meetings, and when when the when the when the mayor is full of shit, I'll be like, "You're gonna get the you're gonna get the baby raper stamp on your forehead." Like, I just want to talk. I want to, you know. And it's like I know that like you know, kind of Trump already did this or whatever. But there was that Mad TV bit where some like fucking out of control guy who's really angry just got drunk and then like woke up after like running for president and winning and <laughs> what happened. And I'm like, I could probably be that guy. Not as president, but at the very least in the you know, Ward 4 in Minneapolis, I think you know, I could 
I could definitely be someone that just terrorizes his way into people. Bottom gun. That is... <laughs> The thing that I love just the thing of Travolta and and Tom Cruise looks so much like the the beginning screen <laughs> NES game, which I don't even know why that would be. Like, what part of the joke is that? I don't know. It just says Top Gun, Bottom Gun, and is Travolta Tom Cruise's bottom? I would see it maybe the other way around personally, but I don't know. I'm not there. I'm not part of their life. Still though, would be an absolute great T-shirt. Bottom of a gun. <laughs> nice. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> We're just a gun, the bottom. See? That's where the, you put the bullets in. That's different from the part where they come out. Ooh, there's a Tommy gun there. I wish those weren't so expensive. I mean, if you want an actual Thompson submachine gun, which, you know, it fires like, it's not rifle rounds, it's like nines or 45 ACPs or something, but it's like. If you want one that's even a replica, it's not even like it's an old antique or something crazy. That thing right there and that that screen, that thing is at minimum twelve thousand dollars, not twelve hundred, which is, you know, for a firearm in America, <laughs> you can get plenty of things for like three, four hundred bucks. You could get so twelve hundred is a lot. Twelve thousand is insane. For twelve hundred, you could get a Chiapa Rhino. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like an, an overly fancy, cool gun like that that's all stylish. Probably works fine. Whatever. There's nothing real bad about it. 1200 is like up there. 12000 is crazy. Like my AK-47 was like 600 bucks, <laughs> and, it's, and it's nice. No, eh, it was a little more than that, but it's like I know you can spend a ton on those. Because they're actually, like, shipped over from Afghanistan. Or, like, they're actually, like, a Soviet Kalashnikov. But it's, like, they also might have a lot of problems. So that money's, like, just because you want to say you're cool. But if you're actually going to do some AK-47 shit, it might not work for you as well. And my choice was, yes, I like certain things and I like style. But this particular weapon is sort of my... Listen, if shit hits the fan, and if it ever really hits the fan, they're just going to drop nerve gas on me from orbit. I'm not stupid. I'm not a fucking, we're going to fight the government. But as far as maybe other people go, maybe supplies get a little thin and someone starts pounding on my door in a, in a crowd of people who are also have weapons. And, and sure, but that's my fighting chance against them is that thing. That's, you know, the best I can do. Like, I'm not fighting the cops with it. I'm not fighting the government with it. That's idiotic but like if you ever watch like the road or something you're like uh oh like this is happening I'm like well this guy right here might help me in a pinch and that's all and other than that it's just kind of fun it looks cool whatever um it's always fun to talk about gun ownership in the middle of a flurry of <laughs> mass shootings but you know really the only thing that all the school shootings mean is that covid's basically over and that's comforting, I think. We did make it one year without a school shooting. Yeah, because we didn't let anyone in school. <laughs> Although there was a lot, there was probably a lot of, uh, you know, schools online. So there might have been a mass cyberbullying uh, over Zoom, you know, which might have led to the real life school shootings later. Who knows? Maybe all those Zoom conferences weren't a very good idea. You, you talk talk shit, get shot. No, it's just crazy people. You, it's bad. You know what all the school shootings have in common? Uh, white dudes. <laughs> children. Oh, yeah. It's well, as, the children. as I've stated, but yeah, no, it's the children who are wrong. Yeah, like the Principal Skinner said. Right. Uh, it was a meme I saw, so I... No, it's I good. That's a good, that's a good mix. <laughs> Um, no, I, uh, fuck, I had a good school shooting joke. I don't remember what it is now. I think Stan already did a well, bunch of the best ones. You should have the trigger on a faster phone. That's very true. And then, oh, but the cops took me down. Just kidding. They don't do anything. Um, yeah, I think that's really all there is. Uh, so what, what we really need to take away from this is Big Trouble Little China is awesome. Kurt Russell uh, is awesome independently of that movie, but also because of that movie. Uh, the guy that plays um, uh, David Lopan, what was his name, John? 
something. Oh, uh, James. James Hong. James Hong is awesome. I was. That's uh, important. I was reading the filmography his, of his daughter. Oh, who's his, well, who's his daughter? That is uh, April Hong. Cool. Is that Fabio? That is Fabio. Nice. Well, that's a rabbit hole we need to go down. Anyway, yeah. So uh, I'm going to make Alexis watch the old Top Gun. And then I'm going to watch the new Top Gun because John Hamm's in it. Probably that's about the only reason, I think. Uh, and then I need to get off of Zoloft because it's making my belly fat and my wiener soft. And I don't like it. Also, I've been having trouble sleeping. There's some, like, real side effects, too, but I just was bitching about being fat because that's, like, the funniest one. Oh. The rest of them are just, like, I get sunstroke easier, which, by the way, sucks. I don't... That's whatever. You know what I want? I just want to do the wrong thing. Like, I want to be able to... I wish I could just go to Doc Leonard, who's both of our doctors, by the way, just be like, okay, listen. Just prescribe me three things okay prescribe me adderall i don't know if i have adhd and i don't care but prescribe me adderall prescribe me some kind of benzo in great supply and then prescribe me some sort of opiate i know but just follow me here and then i take neither of the three of them every day but i just have 30 of them each a month and just here and again when the booze isn't doing it for me and I'm a little anxious or I want to take a day off of the booze. I maybe take a benzo. I don't mix the three together. I maybe I take, I maybe have to get up early. I take an Adderall and then maybe I have a little whiskey at night to go to sleep. And then sometimes I'm like, I just want to disconnect. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to mix it with booze, but I just want to, I want to take like a Percocet or something and just kind of get lost in the sauce. And I just want to skate by with those three pills, not usually combined, although maybe occasionally, and then maybe some occasionally combined with booze. But what, I know what I'm doing, okay? I've survived this long. I don't go that crazy with it. I can easily go a few days without. But I think I don't like this whole being medicated when I wake up seven days a week, low level. What I would really want... I mean, okay, if there was a pill I could just wake up and take and I'm like, I wasn't crazy, like, that'd be cool. Because then I'd probably, like, quit everything and that'd be great. But I would really just like pharmaceutical drugs doled out to me at my discretion to be used morning, noon, or night, depending on what's happening, to just get through my life and skate by until I die. And I will die of natural causes at an old age, not because of any of these crazy pills. If I ever feel like they stop working, I'll just take a break. But is that bad? I mean, is that so wrong? I mean, I understand. It's like... When a different kid at your lunch table is acting up and you all have to sit quietly, I'm like, no, I can hold my fucking pharmaceutical drugs. Like, don't go like, yeah, but you're kind of acting like someone who's like, yeah, I get it, but those people ruined it for me, not the other way around. I've done nothing wrong. I'm going to ask him. Can you just prescribe me a bunch of crazy shit? And I promise I won't get you a malpractice suit by dying because I've been get, I've been I've been taking these from just people I know on and off forever since the early 2000s and I haven't died yet. But at least, you know, if it's coming from you, like there's no fentanyl and I promise I won't do coke too often and I won't mix any of these together that much. And I'll kind of, you know, two or one half dozen to the other. I'll be good. And he's just going to have to take my word for it. And I think with the the, the costs of, of health care in this country, it's like maybe he could play ball a little bit. He's a reasonable man. I'm going to make a deal with him. So on that, <laughs> I'm going to see if my doctor will enable my drug use as a way to manage my anxiety. Uh, because that, if I was 21, would be a giant mistake. But I'm almost 42. I have never, ever fucking contributed to society in a positive way ever and if i was going to i would have by now and i haven't so it's like i'm not gonna die but is me being a piece of shit hurting anybody in a real way really no so yeah all right you know what i'm glad that i have this podcast instead of therapy <laughs> because a real therapist would have steered me away from this and I would have fired them because who's working for who, really?
Good night, everybody. The Reverend John Wheeler Podcast takes zero responsibility for the words, actions, or ideas of its host, guests, or listeners. Though the people on the screen may at times be speaking directly to you and may occasionally give you direct calls to action, neither Reverend John nor the Alchemical Cocktail Lounge are under any moral or legal obligation to answer for the potentially disastrous repercussions that may arise if you are stupid enough to actually follow the orders of a raving lunatic. Think for yourself and do whatever you want because you're on your own. If anyone ever tries to sue this podcast, black SUVs will converge on your location in the darkness of night and you will never be seen again. Remember to like and subscribe.